Hey, it's Jasmine Lane. Thanks for hanging out with me. Now, we're going to get right into this one because it is such a hot topic issue. Trudeau was asked by some reporters recently what his game plan was in terms of potentially axing the tax, at least for the summer season. And this is what he had to say. Now, before we jump into that, of course, you already know what I'm going to tell you. Feel free to like, share, subscribe. Most importantly, comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Are you pro this? Are you against it? Does Trudeau have some points? Do you think he's lying? Whatever the heck it may be, those conversations are very much needed. Whether or not you are for or against what is going on, your voice matters, and be sure to share it in the comments below. The the conversation should be had uh, with uh, the provinces as well, who are uh, responsible for a significant part of uh, excise taxes and taxes on on uh, on gasoline across the country. I really want to stop there just because you could see the fire in his eyes when he was like, they are part of a significant. It's like, okay, chill, bro. Chill. That is true, though. Provinces do put a pretty significant amount of tax on our fuel. I know in Manitoba, where I am from, it's about 16 cents, if I'm not mistaken, uh, per liter. So it is very significant. Uh, that's valid. I'll give him that. Uh, Mr. Polyev continues to refer uh, to the federal carbon tax, which is a price we've put on pollution to make sure that pollution is not free anywhere in this country. You're right. He doesn't want pollution to be free. He just wants to make money off of it. And the way we chose to do it was to collect the price on carbon emissions, including on gas, and giving that money back to Canadian families in such a way that eight out of 10 families in regions where the federal carbon backstop applies do better with the checks that come in through the Canada carbon rebate four times a year then it costs them extra on a tank of gas or to heat their homes. That is the way we designed the fight against, pollution, uh, against climate change. We're both putting a price on pollution to incentivize people to pollute less, and we're putting more money in the pockets of families across the country. So when Pierre Polyev talks about scrapping the price on pollution, he's also talking about eliminating those Canada carbon rebate checks that come in hundreds of dollars for families across the country every few months that helps offset not just the price of gas, but the cost of groceries, the cost of uh, living that go up left, right and center. The parliamentary budget officer, the parliamentary budget officer confirmed that eight out of 10 families get more money back from the Canada carbon rebate than they pay the carbon price at the pumps or in the grocery stores. Can we just break this down? So let's say everything he's saying is true, which we know it's not. And I'll show you some evidence of that in a second here. But if the carbon tax made sense, if people were actually getting more money back than what they spend, if it ended up evening out, why are people so upset about it? Where's the logic there? Really think about that. Because if this was something that was good and we had all of these benefits, as he so claims that we do, we wouldn't have anything to complain about. The reason that we're complaining is because it is not enough. We are just being taxed again for the sake of being taxed. We're putting a price on pollution. Well, what is that price? Because you're not using the carbon tax money to do anything at all to help prevent pollution. This is what Pierre Polyev is talking about when he talks about axing the tax. He talks about stopping the fight against climate change at a time where the country is burning, at a time where floods and storms are having an impact on every corner of the country, and at a time when Canadians are struggling with the cost of living, he wants to take away checks that put more money in their pockets. His ideology is so strong, he would rather watch the country burn and Canadians suffer than continue to fight against climate change and put the Canada carbon rebate in their pockets. That tells us an awful lot about the kind of choices he makes as leader. There's a lot to unpack there, but I want to ask you the question. If you are starving, if you are not being paid enough, if you can't afford to pay your rent, 
all these things that Canadians are experiencing right now, even Canadians with well-paying jobs. How on earth could you focus on anything like climate change? The climate narrative, the climate crisis is something that is so fascinating when you really look into it because the biggest emitters globally are more often than not the poorest countries. And why is that? Because when you are living in poverty, you can't focus, you don't care about anything other than seeing it through to the next day. He would rather watch the country burn and Canadians suffer than continue to fight against climate change. You have to be a very privileged person living a great life in order for your main focus to be fighting climate change, that crisis that sneaks up every 50 or so years that the governments make billions of dollars off of, then to focus on making sure that you have enough money to pay your rent, your car payment, your bills, to take care of your pets. It's just so trust fund childy for him to say things like that. It's so not in reality. The only countries that care about climate change, the only countries that have acknowledged a climate crisis are first world countries. Do you think people living in the Congo care about climate change? They don't. And they're a huge emitter. The best thing you could ever do if you wanted to fix climate change, you wanted to reduce emissions, and all the research is there, would be to get people out of poverty, not put them into it. It's so infuriating to hear him say things like at a time when there's floods and burning, which, of course, devastating situations. One, those tend to happen every single year. Two, the carbon tax is not preventing them, is not fixing that problem. It is a tax for no purpose. And I feel like there are people in this world who are just not educated enough, they don't think enough to really put two and two together there because all of those arguments, yes, of course, we all think that the wildfires are devastating. We think these massive floods that happen are devastating. It's terrible. We should really do something to try to prevent those. What are we doing to prevent those with the carbon tax money? Oh, nothing. Okay, gotcha. Now, just to kind of debunk everything that he claimed right here, I was fortunate enough to go to the Pierre Polyev rally when it was in my city. And here is everything that he had to say about Justin Trudeau's recent claims. And it's not just his opinion either. He had he had some facts. He had some stats. And here they all are. Listen to the facts to ax the tax. Justin Trudeau is on television again yesterday blubbering away that people just don't understand his carbon tax. That's the problem, right? They don't understand and that when he takes their money, it makes them better off. He claims they get more in these rebates than they pay in the, but here's what the parliamentary budget officer said. I brought the documents. These are his calculations. And here in Manitoba, this year, the average Manitoba family will spend $1,750 on federal carbon taxes and get back only $1,248 for a net loss of 502. That is actually the good news. Now are you ready for the bad news? If Trudeau and the NDP are re-elected in their carbon tax coalition over the next four, sorry, over the next five and a half years, they intend to quadruple the carbon tax all the way, right, all the way to 61 cents a liter. And that will bring a cost to Manitoba families of $3,564 with a rebate of only 2000 for a net cost after rebates of $1,500. How many people do you know in Brandon or in Winnipeg, or in Churchill, or in County, in the Paw, who can afford to spend another $1,500 net on taxes. And it gets worse. On top of that $1,500 net carbon tax increase, they want a second carbon tax. They call it the clean fuel standard, which has no rebate at all which will mean hundreds of dollars of additional cost 
My friends, this will mean thousands of dollars in increased costs for families right across Manitoba. And that doesn't even take into account the small businesses who have no rebate at all. When you're able to see both of those side by side, where do you lie? Do you think carbon tax is good, it's beneficial? Are you getting more money back than you pay in? I know that I'm not. Weigh in in the comments below. And of course, subscribe, share, like, follow, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, obviously, the more support that I receive covering matters such as this, the more encouragement I feel to uh, go a little bit harder than I already do, because there are certainly lots of things that I would love to tackle that I'm a little too afraid of getting canceled for. So with that, your support truly does mean everything. I'm Jasmine Lane, and I will talk to you next time.